to reiterate. One of them was what I gave you last week. I gave you point seven where we closed, and point seven is where we are dealing with the doctrine of the Sabbath. And in our doctrine, it deals with the faith rest life or the Sabbath rest. You, there is a rest for God's people. Are you enjoying it? Are you? Because if you are, it should be, it should reflect, it should reflect in your countenance. You know, Isaiah says your countenance testifies against you. And sometimes you can look at people and you can say their, te their countenance is testifying against them. Why? They're falling apart. Well, thank God we don't have that, to, we don't have to do that here. Amen? Because we've got a higher calling. We got the King of Kings. We got the Lord of Lords. We got a beautiful staff. We got a beautiful congregation, a healthy church, and we're going forward and we're going to keep on going until God continues to bless. Now, let me give you two verses. Hebrews chapter 4 is the first one I want to reiterate. Um, I, I, I did not repeat these things before, but there is some uh, interesting principles I want to get into with the Ezekiel coming up. But I want to begin with Hebrews chapter 4. Remember, this was written not by anybody that we know. This was written by someone, but we don't know who the author is. But we begin in Hebrews chapter 4 with the writer who tells us that we who have believed on him. Now notice it doesn't say we who, are, who have believed in him, does it? It says we who have believed on him. To believe upon him is to say we believe what he says. We believe what he desires for us to do. And so therefore when he says we who have believed on him, it goes beyond just believing in. It says we actually have given our entire life. Our life has been given over to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And not only that, but he's done something else. Look at uh, Hebrews 4, 3 again. It says, for, for, uh, he, for we who have believed enter that what? We enter that rest. If we really believe, we will enter rest, as he said. As I swore in my wrath, there's going to be some people that will not enter into that rest because they did not believe. They should not enter my rest, although their works, and remember we touched a little bit about this last week, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Now, I gave you this about two, three weeks ago. I want to reiterate it again for you. Turn to uh, Romans chapter, no, turn to uh, uh, John chapter 8 John chapter 8 this is a great principle that you have to understand when it comes to the glory of God if you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ then the New Testament Sabbath for you is to enter into God's rest got it let me repeat that if you have believed in Jesus, Jesus Christ, then the New Testament rest for you, the New Testament Sabbath rest, the way to manifest that Sabbath rest is to manifest the glory of God. How do you do that? Love. How do you do that? Joy. Peace, long-suffering, patience. You just keep going through it over and over again until finally you can overcome those problems that are so easy, easily besetting us and trying to take us away from God. We don't want that to happen, do we? Well, I'm sure I, I don't want that to happen to me. I'm sure you don't want it to happen to you. But if you believed in him, then the New Testament Sabbath for you is to enter into God's rest. Relax. Let, let God give you his glory. He, God wants to give you his glory. And just let God do exactly what he desires to do. Go to a, a, a favorite psalm of mine, Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Now, I don't know if you've got the exact translation. I've got be still and know he's God. Do you get that? I don't hear a response. Does anybody have be still and know he's God? That's close, right? You're not there yet. Well, you should be there. I'm the pastor. <laughs> what are you laughing about back there? I think I'm Superman. No, I think I'm, I'm trying to find Psalm 4610. Anybody found it yet? Yes. What does it say, Jenny? <laughs> what does it say? Cease. Ah, uh, yes. Where is it? 
Psalm 4, it sees, where is it? Verse 10, right? Is it 10? Yes. As is your name, O God, so is your praise to the ends of the earth. That one? All right, which verse? You're in 48. I'm in 46. 48. I can't see it. Yeah, it's, all right, 46, 10. Oh, listen, O daughter. Listen, O daughter. <laughs> all right, where is it? All right, right here, 46, 10. Where does it say? Cease striving. Cease striving, right? And know that I am God. Simple. All right, there it is again. Let me, let's just go back to that. All right, now, what does he say to do? Cease striving and know that he's God. Is that hard? Is that hard? Absolutely, it's not hard. All we have to do is say, you know what? I'm going to stop striving. I'm going to stop fighting with God. I'm going to stop going against the, the pricks of the life, the Christian way of life. I'm going to tell God, God, I'm giving in finally, and I'm going all the way with you because you are the one who has my heart. I'm going forward with your plan, and I expect you to come through like you promised me that you would come through. So God, bring it on. I'm ready for the fight. Are you? Because I sure am. Remember, we are living in the beginning in the beginning of a stage that I think is going to be so fantastic that the world has not even seen or got a glimpse of what's about to happen to this nation. Now, glory. What is glory, by the way? It's a manifestation of what is known as a word I gave you about maybe uh, six months ago called theantric action. Anybody remember? Theantric action. Well, let me give you the uh, let me give you the definition. What is the uh, theantric action? Theantric comes from God. Well, theo theo is uh, uh, theos God. Trick is where we get anthropos. Now, when you get God and man, you got the God what? You got the God man. Now, when you put the God man inside of a person, now you got that God man living in that person living like that person should be living and really re revealing to people that the true nature of God is alive. The nature of God is alive. And where is he living? Where is he living? Right inside of you. Pastor Rick uh, Kabrick brought that out. He is living right inside of us. So if he's living right inside of us, how about beginning to enjoy the process of what, is he, what he's doing? Because there's a process going on in our life. Whether you like it or not, or whether you know it or not, it's not the issue. There's a process going on in our life. The entric action is what it's called. It's the only way, the only provision whereby Christians are able to really manifest the true nature of who God is with their mortal body, I'm talking about your body, with the body of Christ being the vessel that God wants to use to bring glory to his son Jesus Christ and anyone who desires to serve him. So that word, the answer, comes from two Greek words. Here they are again. Theos, God. Anthropos, man. The entric action is the fullness of to over, the overflowing of God's divine nature inside of a person. Do you realize how exciting that is? That there's something happening inside of us? Go to 1 Timothy chapter 6 for a moment. Now I'm getting excited, so bear with me. Right? Do I want... <laughs> I didn't, you didn't say what I thought you said, did you? No, I did not. Let me see. The antric action, yes, 1 Timothy chapter 5, and I want, I want to talk about Christ in you, and there's a secret going on in you, a secret that a lot of people don't understand because they don't take enough time to really go inside of the Word of God and check it out, but it's called the mystery of godliness. 1 Timothy chapter 5, is it verse 12? Is it bigger? At the same time, I want the one that says, some have already turned aside. No, I want the one that, what is the one that's, I can't find it. I'm going to have to find it. Somebody find that for me. Why don't you pass this? The mystery of godliness. What is it? 512, isn't it? Anybody got 512? What is it? It, what is it? Which one is it that you have? <laughs> Anybody find that? A good fight? A good fight? Uh, da, da, da. Well, you know what? I'll find it for you before the service. My daughter will find it before the service is over. How's that? It could be 612 six, too. 
fight the good fight of faith? There it is. 612. I said it. Fight the good fight of faith, right? Now notice what he said. He said, fight the good fight of what? Fight the good fight of faith. faith. There is a fight we have to fight. Uh, we have to fight. You see, and it's called a good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life. Now notice what he says. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and you made the confession in the presence of how many witnesses? Many witnesses. I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus who testified a good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep the commandment without stain or reproach until Jesus Christ comes back, the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ comes back. And when he comes back, look at verse 16. He's the one who alone possesses immortality. He's God. He dwells in unapproachable light. You can't get near him. No man can see him. No man can touch him. To him be the honor and eternal dominion forever. Amen. Now you can't get any better than that. That's God Almighty. He's alive. That's the antric action. God's, God, that's God inside of a man, and that should actually get you excited. You know, I've been uh, pastoring, I think I counted now, I've been pastoring about 40 years now, and uh, all my 40, thank you, 40 years of pastoring, I've never been so consumed with conveying the truth of any theme or principle as that of theatric action. Why? It says, okay, here it is, here's the plan, now go forward with the plan. It's time. It's time for you to go forward with the plan. Forget about your past. Forget those things that are behind. Go forward with the plan and let the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords bless you because he sure does want to, doesn't he? So I'm sure that he does because he sure wants to bless me and he's been doing that to me and he's been doing that to many of you for years. Look at John chapter 8. Look at verse 29. Now I know what you did. You gave me a store. How many pastors have a secretary and the head of administration daughter who takes care of their pastor? Me. You get Thank you. She says, be good. <laughs> That's as close as I can get. Now, when the personality, I want you to get this now. When the personality, follow this, is really easy, but it's rich. When the personality of the Father, God the Father, is operational in your life through the filling of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, which is the mind of Christ is alive, the possibilities of experiencing Christ's victories are limitless. Let me repeat that. When the personality of God the Father, the one who is the one who's in charge of the creator of the heavens and the earth, even though Jesus Christ did it, but it was God the Father who brought forth the plan. The personality of the Father is operational in the believer's life through the filling of the Spirit, then through the Word of God. Now we got the mind of Christ, the possibilities of experiencing Christ's victory, they're limitless. Now that should get us what? Excited. We should be excited. We should say, what has God got planned for me tomorrow, next week, next month, next year? What is God going to do? What's God got for my family? What's God got for my church? What's God got for my church, my, my people? I'll tell you what, he does something. He's got, he's got this. He's got something that is exceeding abundantly beyond what you could even ask or think. He said that your eye has not seen and your ears have not heard the things that have entered into the heart to those who really do love God. Do you love him this morning? Yes. I'm sure you do. That's why you're here. Concerning the Father, Jesus Christ said this in John 8, 29b. Look at this verse. I love it. Concerning the Father, Jesus said, For I do what? Always. I do always those things that please my Father. John 8, 29. Look at John 14, 9. The Father's disposition was totally manifested to the, to the world through Jesus Christ. And here's what the Lord said in John 14, 9. He said, listen, in John 14, 9, he said, listen, if you see me, 
If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, my, me and the Father are one. In fact, he even said they, they were one and the same in uh, Hebrews, ch in John chapter 5. In fact, go to John chapter 5. I want you to see this. Because this is a verse that it caused the Pharisees, the Sadducees to get up and stone, try to stone the Lord Jesus Christ to death. And b reason being, because he said he was equal to God. Now how can God Almighty claim to be equal to God? Well, you can do that when you are God, and he is God. Uh, five, would I say 22? Well, look at verse 24. No, 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 let, let, let's look at uh, 21. For just as the Father, John 5, 21, for just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son also gives life to whom he wishes. You see it? God the Father, does God the Father give resurrected life? Yes. Does God the Son? Yes. For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all, oh, the, the Jehovah's Witnesses hate this, the way international cults, they hate this verse right here. Notice, notice why. So that all will honor the Son, even as they honor the the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Clear, right there. Right there, again. It says again, so that all will honor the Son. Everyone is to honor the Son as they honor the Father. If you don't honor the Son, you don't honor the Father. If you don't honor the Father, you don't honor the Son. And you end up not pleasing God. And when that happens, you're going to end up out of the plan of God and then wonder why in the world is life falling apart. It's falling apart because of one reason. We all know what that reason is. Our own decisions, right? Yes. Negative volition to our doctrine. We make, we're, products, we're products of our own decisions and we make our own problems. And let's see if I can get this in there. The, the disciples are described as having turned the world upside down. And notice why. This sheds, this sheds light on the attitude that Jesus had. He had a group of people who turned the world upside down. It says that they may all be one. Here was the Lord's prayer. He's about to die. Remember, he's about to be beaten beyond human recognition, as uh, Pastor Rick uh, Kabrick so beautifully described, even though it's a disgusting description, but it is a true one, one that we have to accept. And uh, he, was, he was totally mutilated by the, his outward appearance, as we've seen in the past. But notice what it says. It says that they may all be one. Here was his prayer the night before he died. He said, Father, here's my prayer, that they may all be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. John 17, 1, 21. What's he praying for? He's praying for unity. He's praying for that glory. He's praying for that, that, that theatric action. He's praying for that, that glory to be manifested. He wants the desire of God the Father to be seen by all men. It is, it is the desire. You see, the desire is for the Father to have his nature known to all men. Considering the, the Father, Jesus said, I do always those things that what? That please him. I always please the Father. <laughs> I can't say that. Of course, you can't. But there's someone that could. And thank God, amen, right? Because of who and what he is. And not only that, but describing his di disposition. What kind of person was he? He said, here's his now sabbatical rest. He said, I'm like this. I'm meek. I'm lowly. In heart. Matthew 11:29. 29. That's my sabbatical. That's it. That's my rest. In fact, when a believer, and I'll let you go with this. When a believer reveals the glory of God. There will be one basic characteristic. 
that describes them. Yeah, there's a lot of words here, but I'm going to give it to you. The disciples were described by one word, by one phrase. These guys are turning the world upside down. They were known as nuts turning the world upside down because of their influence, evangelizing the nations, shedding the hot attitude of Jesus as he prayed that they would be one. He actually turned the world upside down with 12 men and a few women. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the great, the great and morning star, our Lord, our Savior. No one can take that from us at all. Amen. Let's give him a nice round of applause and thank him. Thank him for the celebration of the Lord's Supper this morning. So with that in mind, let's bow our heads. Father, right now as we go forward in your prayer and we thank you for your word, we pray that as we enter now into the closing moments of this celebration that you would have Pastor Rick Vitez come on up and lead us into our closing prayer as we thank you for all of these that you've done through your son Jesus Christ. We also pray for the offering that's about to come up and all the other things that will be taking place. Thank you for this congregation that has positive volition and love your word. Bless the remainder of this, this uh, service in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Thank you. I'll take this. Of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we come before you and ask that you bless this offering. Let this offering bring glory to you, and let this offering also magnify the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. So bless it. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. 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 Play some background music. <laughs> you come. Thank you for coming. Have a great day and we'll see you soon Wednesday as soon as possible. Amen. Thank you.